Israel's enemies and critics accuse the Jewish nation of being an apartheid state. Today's Nazis, the so-called Third Reich, lives again in the form of these Zionists in the apartheid state of Israel. That's right, they're the new Nazis. And we are here to say that Hamas, these are freedom fighters. Hamas, these are our heroes. Hamas, these are our role models. But there's no doubt that within the occupied territories, Palestinian land, that there is a horrendous example of apartheid. Meet Corporal Eleanor Joseph. She recently became Israel's first female Arab-Israeli paratrooper. Corporal Joseph was born in Haifa. She remembers when Hezbollah terrorists fired Katusha rockets into her mostly Arab neighborhood. Eleanor said, if someone tells me that the IDF is just killing Arabs, I remind them that Arabs are killing Arabs. Shalom. Hey. <laughs> Rabat Eleanor Joseph. ערבייה, נוצריה, מאיפה? מחיפה. ולוחמת. נכון. קרבית. איפה? בקרקל. את בכלל מתנדבת כמובן. נכון. מה הביא אותך להתגייס למרות שאני מניח שבשכונה שלך, זאת שכונה ערבייה ערבית בחיפה? כן. כולם סביבך ערבים? כן, למרות שחיפה ידועה בדוק יום. ואף אחד לא מתגייס בסביבה שלך? מהבנות בטח לא. לא. אז מה הביא אותך? But how can it be? An Arab woman serving in Israel's armed forces? Isn't Israel an apartheid state? Did you know that there have been Arab members of Israel's parliament since the very first election in the 1940s? Since then, 63 different Arab Israelis have served in the Knesset. Some have even held the post of deputy speaker of the Knesset. Born into an influential family in Nazareth, Hanin is used to making history. She was the very first woman ever to represent an Arab party in the Israeli parliament. In 2010, the first Arab woman elected to the Knesset was actually on board the Turkish flotilla that tried to break Israel's naval blockade of Gaza. I feel I am responsible to carry this message. In Israel, all Arab citizens have the right to vote. Arab women have more rights in Israel than in most Muslim countries. They are free to dress as they like, attend school and universities, serve in the military, run for political office, and yes, even speak out against the government they serve in. But how can it be? Isn't Israel an apartheid state? Four years ago, refugees began arriving in Israel from war-torn Sudan. While most of the world turned their back on the genocide in Darfur, with Hamas and Hezbollah leaders even praising Sudan's president, tiny Israel has allowed nearly 25,000 African refugees to seek asylum within their borders. Most of those fleeing the Muslim massacres in Sudan went first to their Muslim neighbors in Egypt. But there, they faced racism and more massacres. So despite the threat of death or arrest, thousands fled Egypt and came to the border with Israel, where they finally found a safe refuge. Even though it is a strain on the economy, it is the heart of the Jewish people to help the needy, the lost, and the hurting. As survivors of genocide, Israel empathizes in a way other nations can't. So the Israeli government has allowed the Africans in and has asked various organizations to assist the refugees. Charities across Israel, like the Carmel Shelter, are happy to help. They told the immigration police about us in 2006, because at that time, there were the very first Sudanese family came. Now there's thousands. Anyone who is, is lived in this land knows the legacy of the of the Holocaust. We can't turn our backs on people who suffer genocide, yes. like the, the people of Darfur, those who are suffering at the hands of, of radical Islam. We have to open our doors. But how can it be? Muslims and African refugees living freely in Israel? Isn't Israel an apartheid state? 
Actually, young, reborn Israel has always been a miklat, which is Hebrew for haven or sanctuary. Back in 1977, a boat full of Vietnamese refugees was discovered by an Israeli cargo ship. The desperate Vietnamese had been ignored by other ships from Germany, Norway, Japan, and Panama, but the Israelis didn't hesitate to pick them up. Prime Minister Menachem Begin authorized all of them to become Israeli citizens, comparing their situation to the plight of Jewish refugees seeking a haven during the Holocaust. Then U.S. President Jimmy Carter praised Israel for their action, saying, quote, I was particularly impressed that the first official action of Prime Minister Begin's government was to admit into Israel 66 homeless refugees from Vietnam who had been floating around in the oceans of the world, excluded by many nations who are their neighbors, who had been picked up by an Israeli ship and to whom he gave a home. It was an act of compassion, an act of sensitivity and recognition by him and his government about the importance for a home for people who were destitute, again typifying the historic struggle of the people of Israel. But how can this be? Isn't Israel an apartheid state?